Hare Krishna, Hare Bol. So this is third video I'm making on Chamatkar Chandrika by Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur. Uh, he writes about pastimes of Krishna and Radharani and uh, how they may be a little bit uh, full of tricks, full of um, interesting uh, twists and so on. So this is third part out of four. There's four chapters in this book. Mm. So I'm gonna be reading from the book. Um, let me just mention that in first two parts I am in, in also discussing a little bit about rasa, what that is, how that applies. So if this is the first video of uh, this Chamatkar Chandrika that I'm doing, then just listen to that first too, first, because then you may be able to open up to this third one better. So third chapter, Jatila, becoming aware of Sri Radhika's loving affection for Sri Krishna by so many obvious symptoms, becomes very disturbed with great anxiety and calls her own daughter Kutila. Jatila and Kutila, they are the negative factors in Krishna Radha Krishna pastimes. Means that they enhance the pleasure by being enemies. So Jatila, she's mother of Abhimanyu, who is Radharani's husband, and Kutila is Abhimanyu's sister, Jatila's daughter. Taking Kutila to a secluded place, she says, My dear daughter, I am simply unable to protect my daughter-in-law from that Krishna. What should I do? What should I do? I have decided on a remedy. Will it be possible for you to assist me? There must be some way to prevent Radharani from going outside the house. She who is bitten by the eager glances of that snake-like son of Nanda must be protected by being kept indoors at all times. There is no other remedy. Therefore, you should always be alert to keep her carefully here. Don't let her go to Pavan Sarovar or to the Yamuna River to bathe. Prevent her from going out to Surya Kund for performing her usual daily worship of the Sun God. Thus there will be no possibility whatsoever for her meeting with that devotee. From now on you will have to see that she bathes and worships the Sun God here at home. And now that we are keeping Radhika here, that rascal devotee may try to come into our home somehow or other at any time of day or night. For this reason, I will personally keep vigil 24 hours a day by the outer gate with a big stick in my hand. Jatila is making a plan how to prevent Radha and Krishna to meet. So this is first scene here, opening scene of this chapter. Kutila, she agrees with everything that Jatila said. Hearing all these instructions from her mother, Kutila replies, Mother, it won't be possible to confine your daughter-in-law at all, and it won't be possible to protect her from the hand of Krishna either. For Rajeshwari Yashoda arranges every day to bring Radhika to Nandagram in order to have her cook the morning meal for Krishna. So, yes, she agrees that Radha and Krishna shouldn't be allowed to be together because that's against the uh, laws of morat morality, um, scriptural and 
and many other <laughs> codes of conduct that unmarried they shouldn't be associating. So that's the Vedic style. But Krishna, he knows how to enjoy. So he knows that to be like this is more pleasurable. No, he made it like that. It's not as interesting, it's not as intense uh, if the relationship is permitted by society. So, yeah, we can see in this world is like that also. If something is supported by society, it's not as interesting. <laughs> But in Krishna's case, it's like that. When he steals, he's glorified for that. When he runs away from challenge, he's glorified from that, for that. When he is uh, flirting with young ladies of uh, his compatible age, then he's glorified for that. Yeah. That's the unlimited glories of Krishna. When these things happen in this world to people, ordinary people, then that is not ethical. So this question of ethics is uh, present in spiritual world as well, but it plays the role to enhance the pleasure of Krishna and his um, loving associates. Hearing this, Jatila says, Hey, Putri, uh, means daughter, you just go to see Yashoda right now and inform her that from now on, my daughter-in-law will not leave the house to go anywhere else. Yashoda should simply engage Rohini to cook for her son. <clears throat> so, reason why Radharani is so special why Yashoda wants the best cook. Yashoda didn't, she could make uh, her, her, her food herself or she, she could hire anyone she wanted to cook for Krishna. But for Krishna, for Prince of Raja, it has to be the best. Everything has to be the best. So Yashoda, she knew Radharani's glories because Radharani, she got special blessing from Durvasa Muni. This separate lila is described in Gopal Champu. Uh, so, uh, I apologize, no, it's in uh, Gopal Upanishad. It's a completely different book. Gopal Upa, Tapani Upanishad is called. Gopal Tapani Upanishad is ancient Vedic text that discusses this pastime of Radharani and Gopis crossing the Yamuna River, meeting Durvasa Muni and asking him questions and serving him. And Durvasa Muni being very pleased, he said to Radharani, I give you a blessing that you're going to be the best cook uh, in the world. So this, in short, of course, there's there's the whole pastime. There's several pages. Uh, so that's how Radharani she received this blessing of being uh, the best cook. There's nobody anywhere that is best better than her. So I showed that she uh, immediately she said, "Okay, if she's the best. She's she's got to be the one to cook for Krishna." <laughs> obvious solution. Kutila replies, Oh mother, if I tell her that, then Yashoda will surely say to me, but Durvasa Muni has given an indescribably wonderful benediction to Radhika, whereby any foodstuff cooked by her own hand increases longevity, stimulates growth and destroys all obstacles. This topic is indeed famous all throughout Vrajapur. My only son, Sri Krishna Chandra, has become freed from many difficulties caused by wicked demons. 
only on the strength of eating the food cooked by Sri Radharani. Thus, he is now alive and well. Therefore, please don't harm us all by causing this impediment to his regular taking of the grains cooked by Radharani's hand. So Kutila, she understands the situation. So she says to Jatila, but this is what Yashoda is going to say. Because Radharani, her cooking, she brings blessings, protection to everyone and anyone who eats that food. So if Krishna is, then by that time several demons were killed by Krishna and everyone was amazed and now Kutila is assuming that Yashoda is going to think that because of Radharani's cooking, Krishna was protected against adversity. When Yashoda pleads with me like this, then how should I reply? Jatila advises, Hey, uh, oh my dear daughter, when Rajeshwari Yashoda says all that to you, then you should just tell her, mm -hmm. Oh Rajeshwari, Durvasa certainly gave Sri Radha this wonderful boon. Therefore, whoever she touches lives a long life. O oh, knower, knower of all the rules of proper social conduct, by that very boon do you call Sri Radha to your house every day just to have her touch your own son. And furthermore, it is contrary to the proper rules of etiquette for chaste daughters to cook in another's home on a daily basis. Such a black spot against the chaste daughter is certainly talked about throughout all the land. Therefore, we cannot tolerate any more of this. Just as you have love and affection for your son, do you think that we don't have similar love and affection for our daughter-in-law? Jatila now creates a counter-argument to the, the first. The argument is that whatever Radharani touches, whatever food she is cooked by her, then that increases lifespan, that gives blessings, protection to the person who eats that. That's why Krishna is safe and strong. Yes. Now the argument is that uh, there's going to be, uh, that people are going to defame Radharani because they're going to hear that she's coming to another person's house and cook there on a regular basis. So that's not going to look good for her. Uh, and then Yashoda will allow Radharani to touch Krishna so that he will live long and be protected. Not just cook, but to touch. She's pointing out like that you will allow all this and people will hear about all this uh, and so on and so forth. So the question of morality, of proper conduct in society has been raised here. And Jatila, she refused that. She says that, no, she cannot go to another person's house and on a regular basis cook there. Because as you love your son, we love our daughter-in-law. So you're expecting us that we are going to allow your your son will be protected and uh, on, on the cost of our own daughter-in-law not being protected. So you're you're planning to use her to protect you, your family, but you're expose her like that to mm, uh, to ruin her reputation. Tell Yashoda all these things, but if she still desires of feeding her son on Radharani's cooking on a daily basis, then Danishta will be sent three times a day, every day, 
and will thus bring sweet balls and other tasty preparations made by Sri Radha. And if Rajeshwari becomes angry at this agreement, then we will simply leave her, her town and move elsewhere just to protect our daughter-in-law from her son. So the enemy is actually Krishna. Yashoda is just the permitter there. She's not enemy. But they're saying that Radharani, okay, we can still send some food three times a day. Uh, Dhanishta will be sent there. And Radharani can still cook something. But she cannot go there. And if Yashoda is still not going to be satisfied, then uh, Jatila said, we'll move to some other place, some distant place. After consulting together in this way, Jatila sends Kutila to inform Vrajeshwari of the new decision. Vrajeshwari is Yashoda. Thus the old woman succeeded in confronting Sri Radhika to uh, com- confining Shri Radhika at the house. Being restricted in this way, the resultant burning suffering which is felt by Sri Radha Krishna due to being unable to see each other is so intense that it could not possibly be described even by the goddess of speech, Sri Saraswati herself. So the Kutila and Jatila, their enemies, and they're succeeding. Yashoda had to agree that Radharani is not going to come. And Radharani was forced to stay at home, not even go outside the house to be completely isolated. And they're quarantined so that virus of Krishna is not going to be able to get close to her. So they achieved that, Jatila and Kutila, they achieved that. And as a result, the uh, Adi Rasa, which is the uh, supreme Rasa of love between Radha and Krishna, uh, the the supreme experience that only Radha and Krishna can have, um, and only with one another. So that is called Adi Rasa the original uh, pleasure, experience of pleasure, which is which cannot be compared. Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur says that such experience, such feelings that they have for each other, they cannot be compared to anything. And nobody can really describe how they're feeling. Uh, we just know what uh, devotees tell us, those who witness, who experience a little fraction of that ecstasy. Then they say, oh, this is way superior that I am qualified to comprehend. Yes, so these are not um, light topics. So they were succeeding in enhancing this rasa. By separating Krishna and Radha, they both felt something new. Radharani and Krishna, they always feel new emotions towards one another. So this was new and it was intense. Without Kutila and Jatila, this would not happen. That's why they're allowed to be in spiritual world because they're the ones who are enhancing their negative enhancers. You have positive enhancers of pastime, of rasa. Other gopis, sometimes boys, they're they're the ones who are enhancing this adi rasa around which everything is centered. Um, They're in positive way enhancing. Uh, and their own acti- actions, they're also enhancing in positive way. In an effort to cool, cool down the blazingly feverish body of Shirada, which is burning furiously in the agonizing fire of separation from Sri Krishna, 
Her girlfriends make a bed of cool lotus leaves smeared with sandalwood pulp and camphor. But the very instant that her smoldering, lovesick body touches that cooling bed, the bed itself becomes as hot as burning embers. So Radharani's body is heating up, literally. She's sick. And when her friends, her constant companions that are positive enhancers of rasa, try to help, they fail. They made some adjustments, something that could cool her body. Uh, they were running here and there. What, what else could we do to make Radharani feel better? But nothing external could help. All this is just indicative of her unique loving moods of ecstasy, which are such that she considers even an eyebling to be the cause of separation from seeing Krishna. Cursing the Creator who made such blinking eyes, this Shiradika then wishes to be reborn as a fish with no eyelashes. Indeed, without seeing Nanda Nandana 24 hours a day, how would it be possible for such a Sri Radhika to pass the time? That thus failing, uh, thus falling down senseless upon the flower bed, burning by the fever of Sri Krishna's intense separation, Radharani became completely unaware of her surroundings. If anyone tries to address her, the words do not even enter her ear, and she just lies there with her dazed eyes completely motionless and blind. So here is image to behold. Radharani uh, suffering because of separation. Uh, she is exhibiting symptoms of ecstasy and the manifestations of Mahabhava. Um, we see those in Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We can connect the mood of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with uh, the mood of Radharani here. Uh, because Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Radharani. Uh, not only Radharani, it's, it's an esoteric topic. Um, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna who is taking the mood of Radharani. He's taking her Mahabhava, uh, her love for himself, and he's taking her complexion. Actually, she is the one who gives him that complexion. Radha and Krishna are talking, and Krishna says, you're more ecstatic about myself than I am ecstatic by nature. So I want to experience your Mahabhava, your ecstasy. Bhava means ecstasy. Mahabhava means greatest ecstasy. That's why I am going and I'm going to become Chaitanya. And she said, you will, you will hurt your body. Your body is too tender. And she said, I'm going to give you my protection. By giving you my complexion, I'm going to give you my protection so your skin is not going to become damaged. When you will fall down, when you will fall down on the floor unconscious, when you will rub your body on the floor and, and the rough uh, stones and so on. So, Radharani's feelings of separation are superior to feelings of union. She herself states this, that when Krishna is not there, she sees many Krishnas. When Krishna is there, she sees only one Krishna. This is uh, mentioned in Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. Words of Srimati Radharani herself, explaining the pain of separation from Krishna. And now she is... Uh, appearing to be sick because she cannot see Krishna. I mean, 
the, 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 the explanation is because she cannot see Krishna 24 hours a day. She has gone sick because she cannot see the path that leads to meeting him. That therefore she became sick because her feeling of separation became so great. That is the commentary. But you know, those who were around her may not, may or may not know that this is the cause of her uh, symptoms. completely motionless and blind. She could not respond to anything that anyone would say to her. Radharani, do you want uh, some healing, healthy soup? Do you, do you wish the, that we uh, fan you because uh, with a peacock feather? Um, is there something that something else that we might be able to do for you? But she wouldn't respond. She would be just uh, there and not in contact with what is happening around her. Danishta then arrives, being sent by Mother Yashoda from Nandagram and sees the, this pitiful condition of Sri Radha becoming very sorry. The Nanishta says to Sri Lalita Devi, uh, Lalita is best friend of Radharani. Since Vrindavaneshwari, Sri Radharani didn't come to Nandagram for cooking today, Sri Rohini had to cook this morning. Sri Krishna ate those grains anyway and then went to the forest to tend his cows. However, Yashoda was so upset that he did not eat the food as it was usually cooked by Srimati Radharani on other days. Thus she sent me here to see that Sri Radha makes some sweet balls which I will then bring to Sri Krishna. After helping her to make the sweets, I will take them so that Sri Krishna can eat them tonight at dusk in the later evening and tomorrow morning before he goes to the pasture with the cows. But Sri Radhika has now fallen unconscious. How will the sweet balls ever be made? What should I do now? So these are Danishta's words. Her plan was Yashoda's worry, was worried that Krishna did not get the best food. Now Danishta, go get some food from Radharani. And Danishta comes and she sees the situation, the situation is, oh, Radharani is practically unconscious, she is very sick. How am I going to provide Radharani's uh, food for Krishna? Yashoda is going to be so worried about Krishna now. Lamenting in this way again and again, the Nishta then goes close to Sri Radhika's bedside. Seeing no other alternative, she bends down by Radharani's ear and calls out in a loud voice, Hey, Radhe, your beloved Sri Krishna is now standing right in front of you. Just open your eyes and look. So Danishta is a friendly person. She understands the uh, commentary. Instantly upon hearing this, the lotus petaled eyed Sri Radha suddenly regains consciousness and Danishta quickly announces, Sri Radhe, Krishna is not able to eat properly unless he takes the food grains which are cooked by you. For this reason, Rajeshwari Yashoda has sent me to you. Please make some sweet balls with your own hand. So in Sri Radharani, she wakes up a little bit thinking that, oh, Krishna is here. 
Then Danish immediately, before before she manages to fall back and realizing that that's not true, and fall back into her ecstasy of separation, she immediately tells her, "We need you. Krishna is not eating properly without your cooking." The lotus eyed Sri Radha, although burning horribly in the agonizing fire of separation, immediately becomes enthused with great energy upon hearing these words. Calling Sri Rupa Manjari close, she says, Rupa Manjari, Rupa Manjari is another constant companion of Radharani. Quickly prepare the stove, light the fire, and bring the cooking pot. Following the order of Rajeshwari, I will now prepare and send eatables for Sri Krishna. Hey Saki, rather than the usual quantity of sweet balls that I make every day, today I will make four times that amount. Don't you worry at all about my ill health. Saying thus, Sri Radha spontaneously mounts a divine platform just in front of the stove. A most astonishing phenomena is this very same Radharani, by the touch of whose body the cooling lotus leaf bed began smoldering just a few minutes before, now felt that she was being cooled off by the red hot fire used to cook sweets for her beloved. So an oxymoron is here given poetical expression. Now the fire that is heating up what she's cooking is cooling down uh, her anxiety. Within the lo- l- loftiest type of prema, an inconceivable power of amazing wonder is present. It is wonderful because one is burned by cooling camphor and one is cooled by scorching fire. Consequently, is it possible at any time for anyone to understand such prema? What to speak of understanding the activities of a person who is surround, surrendered to such prema? Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur here glorifies uh, the counterintuitive nature of uh, Srimati Radharani's love for Krishna. Then Lalita says to Danishta, Danishta, will profuse rain fall from the cloud combined with lightning? Namely, will there be no more arising of the fresh? No Krishna rain cloud inlaid with the creeper of Radha lightning. The intense drought due to lack of rasa being sprinkled by this cloud is causing the crop of the Saki's bliss to wither and dry up into complete ruination. So Lalita talks friendly to Danishta. She says that is rain gonna fall soon, in other words, with Radha and Krishna, because Radrani she needs rain. Creeper of Radha needs rain. Flower of Radha needs rain. And that rain is Krishna. So will that rain fall anytime soon? Because here we are a little desperate. We are getting desperate. Dhanishta replies, Dear Lalita, you have spoken so true, so true. Just as we are all miserable in the same way, Sri Krishna and all his coward boyfriends feel completely lost. What more can I say than this? Even all of Sri Vrindavan's parrots, peacocks, bees and deer have become greatly troubled by this same agonizing misery. So now we were first we were focusing on Radharani and her friends. They're experiencing some serious um, challenges because Radha and Krishna are not happy together. 
Mm. And it's not their fault. It's Kutila and Jatila's fault. So they're miserable. And now we're hearing that Krishna, on Krishna's, in Krishna's camp, there is same problems there. That Krishna is miserable, and that affects his friends, and cows, and other animals, and so on. So it's not that Radharani she is miserable, and Krishna he's like, oh whatever. <laughs> no. Radharani's and Krishna's uh, feelings of separation are compatible, they match in intensity. Dhanishta replies, um, Okay, later, after finishing the preparation of the sweets, Shirada entrusts them into the hands of Dhanishta. Then Shirada whispers some secret into the ears of Lalita and the other Sakis. Danishta takes the sweet and returns back home to Nandagram. Hmm. Radharani says something to her friends, quietly, secretly. <laughs> Wonder what that could be. Later on in the early evening time, Vishaka suddenly rushes before Jatila and starts rolling and rolling upon the ground loudly crying out while weeping false tears. Seeing all this, Jatila is surprised and asks, Vishaka, why are you crying? Now Vishaka, second best friend of Radharani, goes to Jatila and she is making a scene there. And she says, Snake has bitten Sri Radhika. Jatila, where and how was she bitten? The snake was hiding at the base of a plum tree in the garden. Radharani saw the jewel on its hood glittering through the leaves, and she extended her hand to take it, and the snake suddenly bit her. Jatila, she is upset. Has a thunderbolt struck me on the head? <laughs> That's how Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur uh, explains how Jatila feels. She is she loves Radharani, but not in the way that Radharani would love want her to love. <laughs> Sometimes parents love their children. But children, they're still annoyed by their parents. So this, Jatila loves Radharani, but she doesn't agree with what she's, uh, what her intentions are. And, you know, she does not accept her heart. Crying out like this again and again, Jatila rushes to Shri Radhika's quarters and beholds her sprawled out on the ground, trembling and gasping for air. Seeing this, Jatila begins to beat her own breasts with both hands while crying and sobbing in a loud voice. Then calling Kutila, Jatila frantically tells her, Daughter, go quickly to the cow shed and bring your brother Abhimanyu. After sending him here, please go and fetch the snake by doctors. By the chanting of their mantras, my daughter-in-law will be freed from the effects of the poison. So, Jatila wants to be there for Radharani. Radharani is now sick. Now, we don't know yet if Radharani is now fake sick or is real sick because she told something to the gopis before and we don't know yet what. She told something, Danishta was there. She said, And then pastime continues. So now, is this all together uh, just a uh, performance or has Radharani uh, fallen back into her trance of separation? And then Abhimanyu was supposed to go to see 
a doctor. And he was supposed to bring such doctor who would be able to counteract. Radharani replies, By the fire of the poison, my whole body feels as if I am burning alive. This is all I know. I am not able to say anything more. But you should know that if any male doctor were to set his hand on as much as my toe, then I will give up my body that very instant. I am a chaste daughter, therefore my strict vow stands firm. So, right now we can see clearly that Radharani is lying. She is not sick anymore. She is God plan. And because she is talking in terms of, you know, no man will touch me. <laughs> she wants to protect her image in front of then you know she's not telling what what could actually you know, cure her jatila then pleads oh my daughter in law why do you speak so at a time like this under these circumstances even virtuous persons would eat something which is ordinary inedible or touch something untouchable for this reason due to such an emergency as this there is no fault with the mantra remedy this is the judgment of the wise who know the Shruti and Smriti Shastras. So if, if you know Shruti and Smriti, you know that if it goes for protecting life, you can do things that generally are not done. But then Sri Radha, she says, then I will give up my life right now before your very eyes. Just you watch, but I am not able to follow your order at all. So Radharani, she's like not agreeing with that. She said, my doctor has to be a woman. Hearing this statement, the old woman Jatila becomes most perplexed with intense anxiety. Just then one lady, a neighbor, advises Jatila. There is someone here in Braj who has chastised many powerful snakes in the past, like Kaliya, Agha, and others. When all the cows had died from drinking the poison waters of the Amuna at the Kaliya God, he en enthused them all with new life again, merely by his glance. This is Sri Hari, just bring him here. Simply by his glance, he will release your daughter-in-law from the deadly poison. Hearing this suggestion, Sri Radha says, he whose torturous, controversial association is far worse for me than the snake poison. If anyone were to bring this Krishna here to see me, then that person is as good as my lifelong enemy. So some neighbors, they come for us like, Krishna, don't you remember? He dealt with Agasura, Kaliya. These are big snakes. Now he's definitely going to be able to protect Radharani. So just bring him. Radharani said, Radharani herself said, not a chance. And she's now on Jatila's side. And Jatila is, in one sense, she's happy because she can see that, you know, Radharani is not interested. But on the other side, she's not happy because that might be true. Jatila says, look, my daughter-in-law, then I will take Kutila with me and quickly go to see Purnamasi. She is very learned in powerful snake mantras, Tantra and Agama Shastras. When Purnamasi comes, then she will certainly make you well. Other than this, there seems to be no other alternative. Vishaka says, Good plan, so don't delay any longer. Go quickly to see Purnamasi. I will use a string to make a Tor, torn quit about above Radrani's wound in order to check the spread of the snake poison. By this, the deadly effect will be postponed for about an hour and a half, but after that, the poison will rise to her brain and the effect will become incurable. So Vishaka says, this is good plan. Let's con contact Purnamasi. Purnamasi is elderly lady and she is friend of 
Radha and Krishna pastimes. Then Jatila rushes towards Nandagram border to see Purnamasi. After offering obeisances to her, she offers Purnamasi of everything that had taken place. She informs Purnamasi. Then Purnamasi inquires of Gargi, the daughter of Gargamuni. Hey, what's up, Gargi? Did you learn snake mantras from your father? Gargi answers, No, I haven't learned them, but my little sister has. Purnamasi inquires, Where does she live? And what is her name? Where can she be found now? Gargi replies, She has come from her mother-in-law's house in Kashi and is now residing at her father's house in Mathura. From there, she has come to see me just yesterday. Her name is Vidyavali, and she is in my house right now. What a coincidence. Uh, Jatila goes to Purnamasi. She finds there three ladies, uh, two daughters of Gargamuni uh, and Purnamasi and two daughters of Gargamuni. And one of them happens to know mantras to cure snake bite. Yes. So Gargi is actual daughter of Gargamuni and her sister Vidyavali. Hearing this, the old woman Jatila becomes increasingly anxious and totally desperate within her heart. With a tear-soaked face, she exclaims to Gargi, Oh, Gargi, I have fallen down at your feet. Please, please come along with your little sister to my house and purchase both me and my son with the nectarian blessing of your causeless mercy. Purnamasi then tells Gargi, Gargi, please take Jatila and Kutila to your home, satisfying Vidyavali with your request. Bring her to Yavat, and for certain she will make Radhika free from the deadly snake poison. Um, so Gargi, Gargi is actually, um, I said something wrong before, Gargi is visiting Purnamasi. But she says, where I live right now, close by, there is Vidyavali, the one who can cure snake bite. Just prior to all this, Gargi had already dressed up Shri Krishna in the disguise of a young girl, following the instructions of Danishta and situated him within her own house. The whole scam being nicely prearranged, Gargi leads Jatila to Kutila home and brings them before the dis disguised Nagaraj Shri Krishna. Gargi then addresses him. Hey, little sister Vidyavali, you have certainly heard the name of Sri Vrishabhanu Nandini, the greatly famous girl who is endowed with all good qualities within Vraja. Today she has undergone a great calamity. Some jewel-decorated snake has bitten her. Right now the snake's deadly poison is spread throughout her body. For this reason, her mother-in-law has now come to see you along with her daughter. You should go at once to their house. So Gargi, she tells uh, Vidyavali, who is actually Krishna dressed as, uh, as a girl. That was all prearranged. Radharani apparently came up with the idea and she told everyone, this is what we should do to bring Krishna here. And uh, Tanishta, who was there at the time, and Radharani whispered, Mm, she helped make this arrangement so that now Krishna is Vidyavali and Gargi and Purnamasi and Jatila and Kutila are taking them all to to see Radharani. Uh, so now I'm going to stop here. Mm. This is, I'm not finishing the chapter. I'm going to finish ch chapter next time. But this is how far we've gotten. 
Um, everything that happens is somehow uh, development. Uh, so we have positive and negative things that enhance this. So when the Nishta came and spoke with Radharani and then they cooked for Krishna, then Radharani, she triggered this because she knew Krishna can dress. They do that in pastime. They have supplies of of different paraphernalia. They, they dress as different uh, characters and they enact dramas. And she knew that. And, and also she knew Krishna has done that before. He masks him he can mask himself in such a way that nobody can recognize that is Krishna. So in this case, uh, Krishna becomes a girl um, the daughter of Gargamuni, sister of Gargi, actual Gargamuni's daughter. And uh, she can cure snake bites. <laughs> So now, from this point onwards, we're going to look what happens next. <laughs>